to one and all. May I record, request our honored speaker, Mr. Avia Shastri, to occupy the dance, please. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Hello, everyone. The EML team, IIT Madras, extends a hearty welcome and good evening to one and all who have gathered here for the last lecture of this particular semester. The extraordinary lecture series has been marching along all through the semester, offering enthusiastic listeners a diverse spectrum of orations from different celebrities who have scaled great heights in their particular fields. The tradition is carried along with another enthusiastic lecture from a celebrated Vedic practitioner and a zealous explorer of Vedic sciences, Dr. Amanchi Balasudhakar Shastri, or more popularly known as Dr. A.V.S. Shastri, who is a prolific writer who has authored several books on astrology, gemology, scientific meaning to traditions, rites and rituals, etc. Dr. A.V.S. Shastri is a renowned Vedic scholar and a Nadi astrologer, involved in Vedic research for 20 years and has established Sri Maharshi Research Institute of Vedic Technology in 2005 through strenuous efforts. He is a great thinker and has a tremendous insight into the aspect of Vedas right from his childhood. He has authored many publications and even a magazine, Maharshi Kalamyanam, to disperse science behind Vedic practices in an understandable form to even common public. He has dedicated his entire life to bring out the essence of Vedic sciences to common man and especially to instill awe and admiration in the younger generation. He has travelled widely all over India collecting ancient manuscripts and treatises and has built up an unparalleled treasury of Vedic knowledge. Dr. Shastri has recognized the splendour of Vedas with the help of Bharatvaja Vyamanika Shastra from Entha Sarvyasa that had made him conclude that ancient astronautics in India have scaled unimaginable peaks that even today's modern sciences of astronautics is finding difficult to cope with. As a chairman of Sri Maharshi Research Institute of Vedic Technologies, his ambition and mission in life is to awaken and enliven the sleeping youth and pass on, them, pass on to them the invaluable heritage of Vedic wisdom and legacy handed down by the ancient sages and Vedic gurus and mold this treasure of knowledge for universal welfare. To now, to achieve, to cap up all his achievements, his work on nano copper using Vedic knowledge has been recognized recently with Indian Innovation Initiative Award for 2011 by the Department of Science and Technology, Government of India and CIA, in which more than 850 entries participated all over India, which is a tremendous achievement in itself. All his works over the years are pointing to the fact that Vedic science, based on the Vedas, which are nothing but the holy texts of Hindu religion, is a great treasure of knowledge. It is a fact that fabulous Vedic works which can shed light on ancient treasure troves of technology do not find a due place in today's portal of modern mainstream academic and industrial institutions in India. It is heartening to note that during the recent years, there has been a shift in this stand and there is a willingness to explore avenues for collaborative effort between the adherence to the path of Vedic and mainstream sciences. It is only the joint endeavor of Vedic scientists and mainstream intellectuals willing to work beyond the narrow borders of their own specializations that can help the transmission of ancient knowledge into current knowledge for universal benefit. So, I request Dr. Raj Varadrachan, former president of Alumni Association and current executive committee member of Pan IIT Association to honor our chief guest with a full booking. keep you all waiting. Without wasting any more time, let me hand over the stage to Dr. Shastri so that he can enlighten us on the glory of Vedas and how they are parallel to contemporary sciences. Dear friends, I am B.S. Murthy, I'm a faculty at uh, Metallurgical and Materials Engineering Department. Before Dr. Shastri takes over, I thought I will share, just share with you my experience with him for the last five years or so, where I have been trying to collaborate with him in this area which he just mentioned on the nanotechnology using 
certain ancient texts and and using your intuition to decode them and that's that's much more in fact whenever i talk to dr shastri what i find more difficult is when you decode any of these ancient texts what the meaning that comes out in fact he says for every word in vedas there are seven meanings or something like that so one has to have the right uh, knowledge of how to take it in a proper context and be able to search for those uh, raw materials whether they are available in the current uh, day and then finally be able to use them to be able to make whatever you want to make and uh, and finally prove that yes whatever is being written in those texts is something uh, which is which is true otherwise it's something only like a book for many of us so as a scientist i was very keen on trying to uh, basically understand what is deeply hidden there and also more importantly whenever i say something is science uh, anything which is reproducible is science whether you do the experiment or i do the experiment i should be able to get the same result of course within uh, as long as you are uh, operating under similar parameters huh? so this is what was uh, that which has uh, really uh, motivated me to work with him and i just uh, want to start this with uh, uh, something which all metallurgists are proud of in india this is something which people call it as the rustless wonder which stands in delhi Uh, in the rains in the sun for almost 1500 years and never rusted so this is the heritage of india as a metallurgist starting from my uh, early years of btech i was always wondering yes india is really great to uh, really talk about things like this and more importantly uh, as a btech metallurgist i was always uh, i heard people saying that steel was first made by besimar okay besimar converters and things like that much later uh, when i was doing phd is when i actually came to know that steel was first made in india in the borders of andhra and karnataka and it was called ukku and uh, many tamilians possibly they say ekku or something like that and this ukku has uh, been so famous that it has traveled from india to so many countries in egypt and many other countries the reason was it was very strong steel and it was a steel which can cut a helmet into pieces two pieces and uh, alexander the great was supposed to have used this uh, and uh, many people have used this and the technology has gone from here i at least know two professors one in cambridge one in oxford trying to replicate this steel and uh, they are still not successful somewhere down the line we have lost the technology more importantly is you can take a piece of that steel you can always find out the composition finding a composition is not is a child's play nowadays with all the tools that we have but composition is not everything and when people have found the composition of this they found that it is a high carbon steel approximately about 1.2% carbon or so and any metallurgist if you know a little bit of metallurgy you know a 1.2% carbon steel is brittle uh, and if you want to make a sword out of it sword is nothing but a sheet of metal and so you have to hammer something to be able to make it into a sheet and this technology trying to convert a brittle material into a sheet of metal and retaining the high strength that it can cut a helmet into two pieces is something which is which is the technology that existed in india for many many years possibly 2000 years back and we seem to have lost it somewhere so so this is something which a lot of people have talked about it Uh, about this particular steel and people have written poetry about it um, if you read the literature on this which people now call it as woods the european did not pronounce it as ukku possibly they started calling it as woods my own phd supervisor professor rangarajan wrote even a book on it called indian legendary wood steel and if you are interested you can go through and see my interest in this came more because of my connection to nano last 20 years i have been working on nano and somebody took a piece of this from a museum and put it into a high resolution electron microscope and saw something like this which though there are still controversies whether they are carbon nano tubes or carbon nano structures maybe carbon nano wires there are still a lot of controversy but what is important to know is that there are nano structures in this and we have been talking about nano in the last 20 30 years or so uh, that how did these uh, nano fibers or nano tubes enter into this steel which is made at least 2000 years back is 
is something which is uh, uh, puzzling a lot of scientists and a lot of people are trying to and this is published in no less a journal than nature so this is something which is a, a fact which has been proved now so i have been uh, actually i met dr shastri here in this campus about seven years back 2005 possibly when somebody my name professor p ramara uh, asked him to meet me because he was making various metals and alloys in his house and a small laboratory that he has and he obviously not a metallurgist he does not know anything about these metals what their characteristics are so he was trying to search for some metallurgists who can take up this and then uh, look at whether they are interesting or not and that's when i took a piece of copper alloy that he gave me and we looked at the corrosion resistance and we found that it is significantly for those who are experts in corrosion at least they know that it is much better if you look at the corrosion rate it is much smaller than any other commercial copper and other commercial alloys that we know in fact we made a variety of commercial alloys also in our lab and then tried to compare the corrosion resistance of that particular alloys that he gave with variety of commercial alloys and we found that this has something very interesting uh, results and we started looking at what is the basic reason and tried to try, started doing it some trace element analysis and things like that so i do not say that we have all the answers still but we have been uh, carrying on that but in the meanwhile sometime back about maybe three years back or four years back he came to me with a, some powder which i have put it into my microscope I think this is a point that I have not touched on. He is also working on variety of purifying metals using certain herbs. So he takes a metal, melts it, puts it into a herb, and brings it out. And then we do variety of atomic absorption spectroscopy and things like that to find out whether certain impurities are coming down. And it appears that there is certain amount of particular lead. All of us know is carcinogenic. People are concerned about it. Uh, so one can also talk about purifying metals, but more. Uh, importantly what has uh, uh, you know drawn my attention to a large extent is because of my connection to nano is this powder which he gave me about 3 4 years back which i put it into my microscope we have two tms in our lab and you can see these particles are all nano particles and if you take uh, any one of the particle put your electron beam onto each particle you can find out the eds spectrum energy dispersive uh, spectrum from that you can find out this these are all pure copper nano particles and ever since we have been making uh, so, so many variety of experiments uh, i must have tested at least about 500 samples uh, by now where he has been varying the variety of parameters because i have been insisting that you should reproduce unless i get the same powder again and again i will not be able to say that these are this is really science so we have been able to look at them do various calculation techniques x-ray diffraction things like that something which is very interesting you know where how herbs can really play very important thing all of us at our home uh, if you are at least a, uh, a generation back you would have seen people cleaning copper with uh, some lemon juice or something like that okay you cut a lemon and then just clean that copper the oxide goes off so this is what exactly some copper nano powder when he was making it it has a lot of oxide peaks in it okay just put it into a lemon juice for about 5 minutes or and take out the powder and do once again x ray diffraction all the oxide peaks are not there so so there are uh, interesting things here that what can do and we also try to look at because i am more concerned about making materials into components and trying to use uh, the components so nano i am not really keen as uh, metal nano particles basically because of the kind of work that we do we have done some project for craft and these uh, sometime back where they were interested in nano copper so we were making it in the methods that we have been regularly making and where we they wanted uh, the nano copper in a component form consolidate it into a component so we were trying to test this also into uh, whether we can retain the nano structures even after consolidation so here are, are some images which will tell you that this copper even at 500 degrees when you consolidate it it has still a nano structures each of the grains are not more than about 80 nanometers up so and you can do variety of uh, analysis of the nano grain sizes up to 800 degrees we have gone and it's still about 69 70 nanometers so they are can retain so that's where we are trying to understand what is there at this um, on the surface of this uh, we are doing fdir and variety of other things to see what is actually capping so the process that he uses basically 
is a cementation process where you can take a copper ox uh, sulfate he uses basically from the ores that are available uh, which are uh, sulfate ores that are available just dissolve it into water and put it put some kind of uh, uh, agents which are traditional agents they are as simple as a curd okay so so and and once you put this solution into a container where the uh, affinity of the container to sulfate ion is higher than the affinity of copper itself is so there is a displacement reaction that takes place for example if you put this copper sulfate solution into aluminum you will simply see copper starts precipitating out and that's where you uh, all chemists know that you need to cap this what is coming out otherwise you will not end up into nano but you will end up into micron size uh, things so that is where variety of uh, traditional uh, herbal uh, extracts that is what he is using where he is trying to coat these particles to get those nano particles and we have been uh, looking at them he has also looked at the antibacterial activities of that if you are interested uh, i have all this literature available some publications we have just communicated we are still waiting for uh, the comments on one of them is almost accepted with some uh, comments i am waiting for the final uh, recommendation from the editor and uh, even in the back antibacterial it appears that this come very close to the nano silver that all of us know that variety of people already use and he is also trying to make a variety of other nano powders uh, i am at least aware of nano tin nano uh, iron and other materials that he is doing so i think with that i stop here without really taking your time because you are all waiting to hear from him what he is going to talk about is what is the scope of this field i am just only looking at metals which is a very small segment of the ancient treasure possibly that we have so where is the scope that we can people like us can come in together and see if we can explore some of these and then uh, Uh, see if uh, uh, first of all be proud that there is some such a treasure that exists from this uh, own land and more importantly see if we can uh, definitely most of the technologies whatever technologies that existed those days are definitely more environmental friendly than the technologies that we def- we use nowadays uh, at least that i am convinced of because the way he makes it there are no toxic by products that come out of this process it is done at room temperature very easy process in about 15 minutes he he demonstrates uh, the you know for example uh, uh, dr uh, C- csr uh, uh, dg um, brahmachari dr brahmachari sham petrola these were all there when he was presenting uh, his work and where five projects out of some 850 were selected and he was demonstrating how to make these nano particles and i was standing there so i could see that the process is very simple uh, but more important thing as scientists is uh, what is that that is capping so that's where we are still working on to understand that better so i will leave uh, this uh, i do not want to take any questions at this moment but feel free to write to me i am here only in the campus or walk into my office any time we will talk about it but but we have invited him uh, so let's listen to him more thank you sir
you can see the Vishnu Purana. Our holy, holy India is the entrance of the heaven and salvation. Those who are born in this country are fortunate than gods. That is what God saying in Vishnu Purana. And we should know what is the meaning of Bharata. Bha, you have seen there, light, splendor, luster, beauty, knowledge, and respect. And Ratha, pleased, delighted, gratified, engaged, devoted to. So totally Bharata means the lovers of the Prakasha, writing. So Veda Garbha Bharata. Veda word originated from Ved Dhatu means that which educates, that is Jnana, knowledge. And Vedas were divided into two parts, that is Nikama and Agama. Nikama is science and Agama is a technology. Everybody aware about to Vedas. But everybody thinks that Vedas are uh, belong to some community or Vedanta is above 60 years old. But here if you see what are in Vedas, Anuraniyam Maharo Mahiyam, from atom to universe, universe. Atom we have to call it here matter and universe is energy. How Vedas are deciphered? Every Vedic word has six meanings. The sixth one is Vashati, that is material or medicinal meaning. In Sahina Charya Bhashya, in 89 I have gone through, as written, every Veda Shabda has six meanings. Vatya Ardha, Rachana Ardha, Sutra Ardha, Bhashya Ardha, Egnya Ardha, and Vashati Ardha. So unfortunately, the books treatises authored by our ancient uh, pundits not available now some books were heard about some books were written with Vashadi Artha I am searching for those books but our Maharshis have taken from the Vedas as a science and they developed more Shastras number of Shastras in my this two decades of the period I have gone through more than I have referred so many Granthas in some Granthas, every Grantha refers to so many Granthas. So unlimited, Ananta Vai Vedaha. So all these, uh, and uh, one more thing, the Mahabharata says time is the, and how he knows this word, there are only two domains, that is matter and energy, basis on time and space. And now, I come to the Nikama and Agama. Matter and energy, Patartha and Shakti. Matter divided into two parts, Stavara and Jangama, movable and immovable. And energy divided into two parts, the Jyotir Brahma and Shabda Brahma, light energy and sound energy. If you understand the, the system of our ancient Maharshis, how they developed the science and technology of Shastras, how, how they have, how they, uh, what is their perception of the Vedas and how they converted the Nigamas to Agamas, everything will be, these are the basis. And now we have to, in that basis, Mahaprabhuti this is Parinama Siddhanta and Deha Prakriti. Pancha Bhuta Pagan Jagadu and Pancha Bhutikan Deham. So Deha Prakriti. Akasha Dvayuhu Vayora Grihi Agni Rapaha Apu Prithvi Prithvi Vashati Bhya Vashati Bhyavarnam Anna Dretaha Reta Atapurusha. This is Parinama Siddhanta. So if you see that Akasha Prapancha, what do we call this? Uh, in Sanskrit word prapancha, 5 into 5, that is prapancha. Pancha bhutas are there, tanmatras and everything, this is a very big subject. Just the all, every element, these five elements divided into every element, again 5. 
so if you go through this uh, 25 tasks total science and technology was we can easily understand the our own Vedic concepts it is not beyond any subject all subjects under come with this area only if you carefully follow those prapancha 5 into 5 all science and technologies will come under this 25 uh, you can uh, call it schools or groups whatever it is now I want to share this Max Muller comment on our Indian culture and knowledge. Whatever sphere of human mind you may select for your special study, whether it be language or religion or mythology or philosophy, whether it be laws or customs, primitive art or primitive science, everywhere you have to go to India. Whether you like it or not, because some of the most valuable and most instructive materials in the history of man are treasured up in India and in India only. This is Max Muller from Germany. And one more thing I want to say. This gentleman has to give away three ships of Tarapatra Grandas from India to Germany. Now, I have searched in internet and email Google how collected so many names of the Gandhas, you know, so references. If I search in Google, that every research is going to the Germany. Germany sites are opening. So all our treasure now, where we can form one that is only in Germany only and British Library also. So, more than 1000 names are given in Google search, all the German, only Germany sites are open. So, this is about uh, India. And everybody asks me, if it is in India, why you have disconnected from this knowledge? So, um, uh, I have travelled all over India and I have gone to 500 Oriental manuscript libraries in India and have collected so many and with the Xerox mission and everything in 1889 uh, mm -hmm. and 90s. First uh, I came to the Chennai, Madras and in Adaya library you can see this uh, um, document Lord Macaulay addressed to the British Parliament 2nd February 1835. How we lost our knowledge, this is the cause. I have travelled across the length and breadth of the India and I have not seen any one person who is a beggar, who is a thief. Such wealth I have seen in this country. Such high moral values, people of such caliber that I do not think we would ever conquer this country unless we break the very backbone of this nation, which is our spiritual and cultural heritage. And therefore, I propose that we replace our old and ancient education system or culture for if the Indians think that all that is foreign and English is good and greater than they own, they will lose their self-esteem, their native culture and they will become what we want them, a truly dominated nation. This was a report given by Lord Macaulay to the British Parliament in 1835. How this is the then Macaulay education system introduced in India. Our own Gurukul system was stopped and uh, our Sanskrit education stopped. They call it the Sanskrita is Murta Bhasha. Actually, they missed A, Amruta Bhasha. So, our treasure, the only Key of our treasure is only Sanskrit. Without Sanskrit, we can't find any fact in, in our own grandmas. So, and next, coming to the actually, this is all ocean. Uh, Newton and everybody, Einstein, they have given uh, their comments on Indian science and technologies knowledge. 
I am collecting some sand particles in front of the ocean. Likewise, I am giving, I am, I am daring to show some sand particles of the entire Vedic knowledge. Now, I am starting with Vedic mathematics. As you aware that uh, today also one Vedic mathematics uh, um, uh, seminar or some class has happened in IIT Madras. Actually, whatever we are hearing now, Vedic mathematics came out by Sri Bharti Tirtha Swami, only Ashtadhyay. Actually, Vedic mathematics I found Satadhyay. So, 92 Adhyayas remaining is not available. So, you can imagine whatever available Ashtadhyay is giving high knowledge and recently I met uh, Dr. Vijay Bhatkar who developed Param Computers in Pune in seminar. He always used to say that I developed this Param Computer based on the Vedic Mathematics everywhere the true follower of the Vedic Mathematics. So, the scope of the I have given, I have given Dr. Vijay Bhatkar. Vijay? Uh, we don't want names. We want some param, param computers. Param computers is a computer, it's a super cluster I know about. Okay, all questions, I, I invite all questions after whatever. Just I want to say one thing here. Whatever I have gone through in ancient literature and everything, just I, I, I want to present here. If you have any doubts, no, otherwise. I want, you have read so much. I want one example of each thing. You take any one topic, it's a good thing. Just I am giving. I am giving what? Wait and learn. Ah. 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 Ah.
the, this session is meant for you only. If you want, uh, you come with, you come to me. No, no, no. If you want any other things, you come to me directly. I can show you. How can I show? It is not a uh, way to ask all these questions here. You are a learned man. This is applied mathematics. You have to. Well, mathematics and uh, all other sciences, whatever Granthas are there, Granthas are now republishing by the Chokumbha uh, book publishers, Varanasi and so many Granthas are there. So, all these uh, Granthas names were referred in the Bharatvaja Vaimanaka Shastra and other Amshubodhini like other Granthas also. So, Amshubodhini is a space uh, uh, Astrophysics Grandha and I have translated two chapters uh, um, from totally 12 chapters of there. I have translated two chapters and you can see the Vice um, Darshana, what is present science and what is the um, ancient science. Just I tried to give the um, equivalent areas of the present day sciences. And uh, in Ayurveda, Pranagati Pramapaka Ganita was explained in the um, Ayurveda Granthas and Atomic Theory. Everybody knows that Vaisheshika Darshana by Tanadi Maharshi and Quantum Physics, Ayutavada, um, Ayutta Siddhavaya Samudaya. Like this, Energy and Solar, Cosmic Thermo, Shakti Ganita, Space Sciences, Sonic Eum, Earth and Cosmos, like this, Plant Mathematics, Valmiki Ganita, and Bija Mathematics, that is Seed. All these uh, sciences have found and have collected number of Granthas from uh, different sources. But I have to work on that. Because I am a, uh, because basically I am interested, I am a lover to collect those Granthas, I have procured so many Granthas and I have to work on that. And uh, Vedic Applied Sciences, Toxicology, Agatha Tantra, Engineering, Aparajita Vuricha, Robotics, Samarangana Sutradhara, Computer Science, Vedagarita, Artificial Intelligence, Polynes, Vyakarana, Physics and all branches of the this. I just am giving one text, for example, all these uh, examples are given only. Every subject they have number of grandhas are there. But it is not possible to give all list of those grandhas in this presentation. So I am only giving one grandha in particular one area. And chemistry, all Rasya Shastra grandhas are there. And biology, number of Ayurveda grandhas are there. Metallurgy, actually I have given one presentation in IIT Madras only. Total metallurgy. More than 60 slides I have given IIT Madras in 2006, November 14, same day in IIT Madras. And nanotechnology, the Pipilika, Pipilika Swarna, what do Ayurveda people call this uh, nano as Pipilika Swarna? So they have already uh, mentioned about uh, this nano and uh, Aeronautics, everybody aware about aeronautics, Bharatwaja Vaimana Shastra. And in Vaimana Shastra, uh, some chapters were given in the Rekha Marga in space when aeroplane travels in, uh, in the space, they have described different uh, routes like now national highway, like what we call. NH5, NH7 like that, they have given a number of, uh, these are given information in the ancient Granthas, what we want to know, then we have to work on that. And Mandala Marta, all these uh, numbers are given in these, as it is in the Vaimana Shastri Grantha. And uh, if you go for the engineering and uh, concerning architecture, you have seen number of temples in South India, particularly Hampi temple, 
Saptaswara and thirty, uh, some 24 uh, musical pillars were there and in Suchindra Saptaswara pillars are there and hanging pillars in the uh, somewhere in South India. All these uh, technological engineering technology are already in ancient India approved. And experts of Shilpa Shastra, number of Grandhas on the Maharshis who wrote uh, Kashyapa Maharshi, Vishwakarma, Maya, Bana, Manu, Chaya Varusha, Maharuti, sorry, this is repeated, Sharya and uh, Shilpa Vardhana, Shilpa Vardhana, all those Maharshis were written on the Shilpa Shastra. And uh, all these models, the ancient Indian mathematicians had no computer, but some of the techniques they developed are preciously the ones used in solving problems with today's computers. Rules are so scientific and logical in manner that they closely resemble structures used by computer scientists throughout the world. Sadly, the link between artificial intelligence and the Polish grammar was discovered in far away uh, by the NASA scientist called uh, Rick Briggs. But the beauty, but the beauty of it is that it, it can formulate logical relations in the language with the scientific precision. Polynesian scientists point out can be conceived like a computer that generates correct words, sentences with the basic inputs. The computer taking the inputs uses in the Polynesian rules and flourishes the correct word sentences in the logical order. Panini has made Sanskrit precise, concise and complete. It is like a set of condensed quotes for the entire language with some rules attached. It is a test where condensed form of Sanskrit which paradoxically at times becomes so acute, uh, acute, acute that a commentary is, is necessary to clarify it. Interestingly, many scientists are tempted to uh, speculate why and how Panini developed his rules in no uh, in so concise and precise a manner without a computer in Times of India 22nd March 1992 all these we have our own prajna but we have to see our prajna is not uh, complete so everything we have to see and we have to work. Without work anything, nothing will happen. So I, as I said earlier, Aita Siddhavaiva Samudai is a, is a grandha of uh, uh, atomic energy. So these uh, things are also to be worked out. And so many Vijnanas, what we have lost in our earlier days. So many Granthas are there. We have considered the Puranas as a book the Purana and everything. Puranas are, if we see the, with the scientific uh, perception, definitely we will get some information or some advancement uh, which can help to fill the gaps or advancement of uh, present day science. So all these videos were there, you can see. And all these uh, Pradaya Shastra, Thala Shastra, Parakaya, like Visoshini Vidya, Mahavada Shastra, all human sciences, like Vedupriya, everybody knows that, and food sciences, food technology. And now I come to the engineering and technology. So in so many Granthas, in Samarangan Sutra Dhara, they developed machines. The Bhoja Maharaja, Bhoja Maharaja developed so many missions and uh, robotic technology in war, everything, Vikalpa Akarshan Yantra, that is a light detector, <coughs> Sankalpa Akarshan Yantra, Truth Analyzer, Chaya Akarshan Yantra, Video and Photography, Kriya Akarshan Yantra, Secret Cameras, Chest Akarshan Yantra, Behavior Analyzer, and Bhava Akarshan Yantra, Thought Analyzer, and so on, you can see the number of, and uh, now we are working with uh, defense on some uh, armor alloys for the DRDO. It is also Patasamskar of the Ipka. 
टेक्सटाइल इंजीनियरिंग तमो यंत्र स्पेट्रोस्कोपी डॉक्टर डोंगरे प्रोफेसर ऑफ बनारस हिंदू यूनिवर्सिटी डेवलपड दिस पेट्रोस्कोपी बेसिंग ऑन आवर एंशियंट टेक्नोलॉजी दैट वाज इन बी एच यू ओनली डॉक्टर पी रामचंद्र राव हु वाज वाइस चांसलर ऑफ बी एच यू ही हैज गॉन टू द हिज लैबोरेटरी एंड ही वाज एक्चुअली डोंगरे वाज नेटिव ऑफ पुणे नागपुर आफ्टर हिज रिटायरमेंट ही focused on this area and he developed the thermo yantra that is spectroscopy basing on the um, that mission was uh, now he has given to the bhu and you can see at bhu that thermo yantra developed by professor dongre and dappana uh, shastram after electronics yantra sarvasva mechanical engineering ashanakal padarbu food technologies like this life sciences moolika ka prakasha botany Nriyas Chandrika Solvents Corporation, Kheda Sarvastam, Astronomy, all these uh, sciences were so many grandas were there, and uh, all these engineering technology. You can see number of number of all the uh, grandas. Uh, one unfortunately now we are not accessible to all these grandas. Some of grandas are available in the ancient manuscript libraries, but most of the grandas were kept in Germany library. and uh, this uh, ancient aeronautics have translated and uh, shloka to shloka earlier dr subhai shastri subhai shastri mysore has uh, translated by manu shastri earlier and after 100 years how translated shloka to shloka he has given a concise uh, uh, translation and basing on that only 2004 have started on pilot laboratory with uh, Passion. No, I will do something. Is it uh, real or not? Let me see. Then I started uh, developing some alloys. Uh, we have described in the ancient uh, aeronautics. I have developed some alloys and have uh, gone to Dr. Pandey Ramanugaru, Padma Vibhushan. Sir, I have developed something. Is it useful or not? Let me know. He suggested uh, as uh, Dr. Murthy. Uh, now he said. I have come to the IIT Madras in 2005. I have given those samples to the Murthy Garu, and he characterized those samples, and he has seen the results in the first. So here we have to go through why I am giving this John Burroughs or Max Muller everything because we don't believe our culture if somebody says from the West. So I am giving those names, uh, some Western names here, yeah, because nobody believes. If Bhaskar uh, Acharya said, nobody believes, and if Aryabhata said something, nobody believes. Some, some Michael, some Burroughs, like some Max Muller from West. If say something, it is considered in the India. That's why I am giving the their comments in here. And now I come to the metallurgy. This is my core area. Now I am doing number of materials here. Actually, we have some slides I have not uh, presented here. We have developed number of material uh, alloys uh, described in the Vaimana Shastra. Those results also because of the time, but it's only. 30 to 40 minutes only time, so I can't uh, present everything here. If you have interest, kindly uh, email to me. I will send everything for your uh, reference and everything. So in metallurgy, as uh, everybody aware that uh, iron pillar is the Sajiva Saksha, is witness of our richest uh, culture in the metallurgy. So. Uh, A number of grandhas, more than thousand grandhas in Dhatu Vada, Loha Shastra, Loha Tantra, like this, so many grandhas are there. Every grandha, grandha is giving. One interesting issue is here: processing metals with herbs. That is the beauty of the process in ancient metallurgy. 
now we have everybody says that phyto a new branch in science of phyto metallurgy so all these uh, metals are alloys showing very advanced properties recently we developed uh, one scientist from came from us and chauri dr chauri and they are asked me dr shastri or can you develop uh, uh, copper and uh, tungsten alloy so i tried and i got some result how to continue so minimum facilities should be there everything everything provided by government or iit madras you are doing you are in a position to do something but i am a one man army doing for last two decades this uh, research so i have my own limits to grow or to give everything in a day or two days and everybody you know solidification of mercury we have done this and we have also made powder of mercury also i have sent those powder for the testing iit madras in the year 2007 or 8 like that and the anti gravity material also mentioned in the uh, our rashya shastra granthas mercury when mercury uh, process are given that well when 12th process is completed successfully this is uh, charanti arasamdrat this is a uh, shloka from the rashya shastra mercury moves moves like an earth worm that is the um, what we have gone through in the rashya shastra granthas and uh, we have completed uh, nearly 5 to 6 processes and we have solidified the mercury also and we have made powder of the mercury also so all these things are proving but only thing is team work as uh, swami vivekananda said only four persons are sufficient to change the india or change the world so you people you have to work on this because i am not a scientist only with passion i love vedic sciences i live with it. technology vedic heritage so i am doing something here being a scientist and being a student of the future scientists you have to come forward you have to join with your ha- join hands with us then we can do something then and our products as murti garu presented here some slides and some results have shown we have developed till today nano copper copper oxide nano tin tin oxide nano zinc zinc oxide nano lead lead oxide nano bronze nano bronze already we developed and we have supplied to the industries also and defense also current and beams amar raja batteries number of uh, industries we have supplied to the nano materials and defense drdo and diat cages in cages we are we have supplied and we also succeed in preparing nano gold nano silver the basic results are good but we have to standardize the process te- uh, techniques and everything so all these uh, and we are supplying cjts powder to the bhcl for the solar pv cells combo now green technology is what we have done so far purification of metals and minerals metals extraction from the ores by herbal route melting metals in low temperatures actually dr prahlada vice chancellor of diat visited our institute recently now 6 months back and i have shown the scrap of iron i i have taken scrap of iron before him and i mixed it one uh, this herbal extract and i put on normal stove at the temperature 90 degrees the scrap become powder very smooth powder <coughs> those are the technologies nobody believe uh, now dr prahlada is our pillar he used, he just he wrote a letter to the all defense institutes every institute nominate some team and go to the cbt and start some projects on the ancient uh, metallurgy so that is the position now and metals and alloys already shown high high um, high corrosion resistant copper high electrical thermal conductivity copper high malleable branch high 
high pure metals like copper, tin and zinc. And one more thing you have to say here, we have developed a branch, copper tin alloy. Generally, copper tin uh, branch uh, proportions are 80-20, copper 80 and 20 tin. But we developed with 2% of tin only. More than properties, corrosion properties, more than 80 20 uh, proportions, and it's very malleable <coughs> ductility. So, all these are uh, possible, become possible through our own ancient traditional processes. And now you can see they are already Murti Garu has expressed the process at room, our nano. Process is like this only, process at room temperature, process exclusive of power and energy, we don't use any electricity or anything, and process without chemicals, process without toxic byproducts, process with 100% hyper electrons, process time is 50 minutes per kilogram, batch wise, any batch, if it is kilogram batch or 10 kg batch. Economical, energy efficient and eco-friendly, sustainable properties even at large scale production even large scale production, over to nano single step. So this is our process what we have done. And uh, already <coughs> you are aware about that CBT has received a national award for last year. And we are recognized as a silo and uh, MOU with the CCMB, IACT and UOH. Recently DMR also accepted to um, give their uh, support in our research and IIT Madras has recognized our center as the external MS and PhD center. Now students are doing their MS projects and PhD and uh, MTech projects in our, with our institute. Thank you. Thank you all. I request you. Finally, I want to say we must be with broad minded. Science is not limited and science has no boundaries. Nayiti in the Sanskrita Vanyaya is there. Whatever you see, you have to feel that Nayiti. Something is more than this. Then only you can find the truth. So I request you all kindly why don't you focus on these areas. If something we will do something. If it is failed, let us, we will quit it. Without doing anything, without entering the field, it is not way to criticize everything with the preconceived minds. Welcome all, welcome all to do something, to do something. And I request your alumni and IIT Madras to join in this noble cause. This is our traditional knowledge. You are aware about China. Now he is the techno leader of the world. How, how it happened? They are using only traditional knowledge. India is rich, rich knowledge than China. And even today, we are importing everything from the West. We are not developing anything here. What is the vision? Just you think. I am requesting you all and everybody, thank you. Thank you for listening and uh, giving this opportunity to me. And I am ready to give any clarification. And you people should learn to know if you have a preconceived or a personal interactions come to me. I am ready to give any type of um, um, clarification and everything. Just today's meeting is overall view on the Vedic science to introduce. Whatever I have done, already I shown. If you are not aware, come to me. Or give me your email, take my email and we will interact with through email. Okay, thank you. Any?
let us know through the session open for questions. Anyone who has questions to ask to Dr. Shastri can just raise your hands, Mike will come to you. The first question I ask is, telling everything ancient as very is absolutely disregard for history. What you told are things which are, you know, 300 years back, 500 years back, 800 years back, but you have branded everything Vedic. Absolutely unscientific. The approach itself is unscientific. Not everything is Vedic. All the Shastras and the time of Veda, hundreds of years of difference are there. There are things you have told about, you know, you have told about the iron pillar near Kutub Minar. That is much more thousands of years later than Veda. Why do you mention that with Veda? Trying to relate everything to Veda is actually a, a kind of superstition, nothing other than that. You tell that there are some ancient wisdom, we need to know that, we need to examine that. You know, you told, my question is first, how can you relate everything to Veda? That's question number one. Number two question is, it's very, very interesting that you have mentioned that always, why you have mentioned the Westerners? Because nobody listens to the Indians if they speak it. You know why, why we listen to the Westerners? Because they do a thorough job. We don't do it. We, we have got all these so-called wisdoms, as you say. We don't put them to scientific tests. Even the way you have presented... One moment, one moment, one moment. Just a minute. You, you want to ask questions or you yeah, want question. to give the lesson? Question. Uh, lecture. lecture. No, no. Question. First question is how... You do ask question-wise. First of all, first, first, first question is, is, first uh, question is, can you say that other than Vedic literature, can you find other literature in the world? No. No, no, no. no. The question is, why yeah. everything can be said Vedic? That is the question. That is the only literature and, which is the only ancient. No, so what? This is, the iron pillar is nowhere related to Vedic age. If you agree with that or not, that is different. Which one? Please, please. Only Vedic literature is the, everybody okay. accepted, everybody accepted that is the no, Vedic literature, appointed, the ancient literature. Uh, appointed uh, question. Uh, uh, no, just a minute. Appointed question. Iron pillar near Kutub Minar, is it Vedic? And what, what, you, what, do you, what do you think about the Vedic? First no, 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 of all, shloka, first of all what, shloka, is, shloka, what shloka, is your understanding shloka. about the Vedic world? No, no. no I think let me know. Let what me is know. its connection with Veda? What General. is your understanding about Veda? What is your understanding about Veda? I, I don't say about understanding. Mm -hmm. I am telling about history. The Vedas were written at a time which is said to be Approximately 5,000 years back, right? And have you have you gone through Veda already? I have given Veda was divided into so many things. Maharshi has developed shastras on that. Fine. Okay. So it is mola. See, this is the root of the knowledge. That's why I have given everything here. I am not saying that Veda. Veda is only theory. See. If, if from the theory, so many Veda is not theory. Veda, Veda is a well written book. It's not theory. Number one. Number two, if you start asking whether you have gone through Veda, whether you have gone through that, then I will ask the counter question Have you studied physical metallurgy? Have you studied physical metallurgy? You are talking of metallurgy. Have you studied chemistry? You are talking of chemistry. I, I told you already, I am so, not that. I am. See, the thing is, the worst part is, you are, uh, I mean, the, the greatest problem with me is your entire presentation is very unscientific. Okay. You give some names and you say this is there, this is there. I would have been, whatever I, I would have, have been made, very happy. Whatever, whatever I have been advised by the organizers, <laughs> sir, give the overall picture about the fine. Many you, sciences. If you would have taken two and proven it, you would have been happy oh, instead wow. of giving two hundred. You have not seen Dr. Murthy's presentation before? I have heard. Even no, I did not have a single reference. Yeah, and also it does not talk about whether it is a characterization of the anti-matters or the preparation of the anti-matters. I am not about sure about it. 
What is the knowledge? So many. First, no, first we first have prepared in my lab, my processing lab. Then Dr. Murthy develop the same repeatedly. Means that we should be able to prepare it in IIT campus or anywhere in the world. We don't need to prepare it in your laboratory. I think that is why the scientific reproduction becomes it. And what Professor Murthy has talked about is how nicely the characterization matches, which we accept. But we don't know whether the preparation was done. And now coming to the other part of your talk, taking the clue from Professor Das, I just want to ask you a few things. Let's say I want to learn from the Vedic science and I want to implement today. So as a student of science, I would like to know which part of Vedas actually gives me what clues and then elaborate on it. What I got is actually like an index of a book which just give me some legs. No, what I am, sir, sir let me here, here, sir, let me you know, just, 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 you are right. In your way, you are right. Yes. But organizers asked me okay. to give an overall, right, what, are, what are in Vedas? Just you give an overall picture. Sir, I am happy that you get the list. We can go back and study. But now, can you please explain two things that I have a question in your mind? Given my background in the whatever science I am trying to do. First is, you talked about the Bharatraj Vaivanika and way back in 1974, we are in 2012, way back in 1974, a well-written paper by one of the professors of IS, Indian Social Science have refuted it. Okay. Can you talk about how your findings are actually different from it? That is the first question. It is. It so, is. let me see the second question also. Okay. Second question you have talked about is that, let's say even in nanotechnology, we are making nanoparticles. Just before coming to the seminar, I also did a Google, like you are doing. And I can find there are few papers talking about using biological extracts to prepare nanoparticles as reducing agents. Okay? How is your result different from their results? I don't see any comparison with the whole literature. So please come back to our modern science and then try to reach the gap. Here, I want to say the nanoparticles which we have developed through this system. Only we have presented. I am not saying that nowhere nano materials are not developed like this. And we are only the person. Biological and the chemical base are already there and the ball milling system is already there. But we have proved through our, whatever our, our Rasha Shastra Grandhas mentioned, some uh, shlokas basing on that, we have tried and we have succeeded when we have developed. We are not saying that this is the first time nano. Okay. Number two. What is your first question? Last question was on Bharatraj Vaimanika Shastra. Okay, Vaimanika Shastra in this uh, yeah, the only problem, the only problem is Talpade is a Pune. It belongs to Pune. I have gone through uh, one uh, library there, Oriental Management Library. If I remember that is Bandakar uh, Bandaka Research uh, uh, Institute are also there. I have gone through one document there. Dr. Uh, Talpade, sorry, uh, Sri Talpade. He manufactured uh, aircraft and he travelled for 12 miles and he height is 15 feet, 100 feet. He fly the aircraft. So records are there, but our British government has removed all Indian records. Uh, British government left in 1947. What has happened? So we are now in 2012. Yes, yes, yes. It was published on so many daily papers. Daily, the the three. That is the so only you, problem. If you think that your science that is, is the science, only problem which we have not done till today. That is the only problem. Indian sciences have not documented. Sir, you are saying that you have read it, you have made up, you have actually authored a book. So I will consider you as an authority of the subject. So can you please explain why Bukunda has made a mistake and why was the mistake? Sir, how can I say okay. if you if, 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 everybody has their own perception? How you how you have gone through? That is the important. Correct. I don't know. How, how can I say? How can I say, Doctor Mukunda? Can you please pass the paper to? Yes, I have gone through. Yeah, please. Doctor Mukunda. 
Bro, how can I say uh, how Mukunda was explaining this? How can I say? You have to you have to ask. You are the person making the claim. I can say that I can say that I have developed some alloys basing on the Vaimana Shastra. Then don't talk about the text. Then don't talk about the That is that is a part of Panchaloha and the Panchadhara Loha. Every Loha. I can develop. I can develop some alloys from my capacity. I have started somewhat. And please, if that is even if, if that you, is, you have to publish your material so that you know other Indians. No, we have, we have we have communicated. Sorry, we have communicated already. Why you are mentioning presentation? No, 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 no. We have Sorry. communicated already. I, I have some more questions on slightly uh, things which are from my area. So you had a couple of things, interesting statements. Uh, something called anti gravity. In fact, uh, you know, modern scientists would love to find you know the analog of what is called a Faraday cage, so that they can do experiments in gravity. Since you have found anti gravity, then maybe you can tell us something about anti gravity. Definitely. If you come forward, no, 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 I don't know. Who will do? How can I? Everything I do. How can I do? Everything. I cannot do everything. You are saying. I am giving the information. No, you are making random. Literature survey, what about literature survey, how long through, I am giving. What is the reference? So that I can go and look it up. I mean, Sanskrit is not a hurdle for me. And, okay, you are not the only person in the world. Can I ask you some questions here, please? Next. Hold on. Hold on, Suresh. Yeah. Okay. This gentleman has scratched the surface of one but perhaps, like you said, one sand in the ocean, and he is an expert on producing copper nano particles. And if you want him to come and do that in front of you, it's a valid question. No, no, no. no he has not said he is an expert on uh, uh, the anti gravity matter. He all he said is there is literature there. If anybody from IIT, the main reason why. We initiated this is if anybody, any of the professors want to find out the truth or the otherwise of this, of these claims, we have professors from Sanskrit College who will translate it for you. There are tall claims that, you know, and then if you say some home and things like that, the whole world uh, sound you hear, and things like, all those tall claims, we all know as scientists. All we are saying at this point, he says all these things are there in rather than call it Vedic knowledge, let us call it Sanskrit literature. So hopefully all the other people who have some uh, problem with the word Veda, Veda, move away from that. Let us call it Sanskrit, ancient Sanskrit knowledge. Let me finish it, then you can, you can ask your questions. Okay? So all he is saying is he has cracked one surface. On narrow, if you want him to reproduce this yet, he will be able to. Anything more than that, you have to work with the uh, 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 Sanskrit Institute, and if you want to go in, you are welcome. Sir, That's all that is, I want to say. Sir, just one minute. Yeah, no, no. He has, he has authored a book. His resume says he has authored he, he translated a book. He didn't say, I, am, I made the map, I made the aircraft. He said he translated my mind in Sastra. Sir, Vardhaja has actually done it. Yeah. Vardhaja has given the clue to make it. Yeah, he didn't say, I made it. He said he translated the book, verse by verse. Why are you saying he made the airport? Excuse me, sir. Yes. You said he has only made copper powder and, and copper, copper right? Yeah. And, and in the properties which are uh, delimited is high thermal conductivity. I am a heat transfer man. I would like to know what is the conductivity. He will be happy to produce a copper. You, you conduct to do that. Then the thing is, what is the conductivity? How much is the enhancement? Under what condition and what is the mechanism for that? I understand copper powder very well. Okay. He what? understands copper powder very well. Let us have on copper powder, nothing else. And then this talk okay. is the I am ready to do I am ready to do work with you. I will do the powder and you will talk to you. He will be happy to work with you. Science, yes. science doesn't work that way. We won't come to you, you won't come to me. Most of the things I look to, I don't even know their face, how they look. You have to give something. 
you should publish something which says this is this this. If you do, you get this. And he will do that. You have problem with Westerners, but I will do what? Okay. You have problems with Westerners publishing in Indian Journal of Medicine. Oh, sir, I request you. I will give you a copy. Yes, sir. 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 Yes, sir.
No, I, I can send him. He's there. Uh, it takes, just takes a minute for me to send that paper to you. Dr. Shastri, I would like to ask you a very simple question. You have taken a lot of names, you have said a lot of things, you have spoken of imagination and you have spoken of results. You have simply connected names. That's all that has happened. I'll give you a very specific example. You had talked of Panini's grammar. That is simply what is called a grammatical construct, language construction. I come from computer science background. I'm hopefully well versed to speak on this. This is automata theory. Simply extrapolating that word sense. Whether we take the name of Mr. Briggs, who was a language processor person, whether we take the name of Alan Hunt, who was also a language processor person, whether we take the name of Noam Chomsky, who was also a language processor person, have worked on the same field. You are simply bringing in a term to all people. Is this not misleading? If you want another example, you had talked about the robotics and the Samarangana Shastra. Samarangana Shastra, as far as my understanding, translates to warfare and war related devices. War machinery, war machinery. Whether we talk of cannons, whether we talk of whatever swords and shields, materials, nanotechnology, whatever you want to talk of it, it's not robotics. Robotics needs mechanisms, self-controlled with some amount of programming, some amount of input, I, some amount of information processing. I don't find that. So you are misleading people. Please defend it. Samarangana Sutra Dhara, I think some Sanskrit scholars also here. I have also gone through total Ganga. Jantrika, Sailika, what I am calling robotics. Not only uh, soldiers in Samarangana Sutra Dhara, they have sent for war with a Yandrika Sainya. That is come under ro robots. Robot, whatever. That is that was mentioned in the Savarangan Sutra. So if I continue on the same line, Mr. Jules Bird and I, Mr. Isaac Asimov, I think they are well known names over here, have also sent out many such armies. Please we don't call them as robotic scientists. They are science fiction writers. Okay. Okay. I request you. Just I from starting I am saying you, whatever I have gone through, first of all, my today's lecture was uh, um, requested as overall uh, view of our the ancient sciences, whether you may call it Veda or Arsha or Sanskrit, whatever it is, you name it, whatever it is. So, and uh, whatever I have done so far, 